Hey everyone, you're listening to the Active Turnkey Podcast, a podcast designed for hands-off, passive real estate rental investors. In the Active Turnkey Podcast, you'll hear Tom Olson and Jared Stoltmeister discuss all things turnkey rentals with other turnkey providers, service providers, and rental investors. Our goal is to help you reach your financial freedom and whatever comes after that. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Active Turnkey Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Stoltmeister, and I have Tom Olson with us. And uh, we are here. We're back. It's been a few weeks since we've uh, done a podcast. Yes, Jared. Too welcome long. back. We need to be doing these. We do. Somehow, mm-hmm. more often. Mm-hmm. Um, we apologize. Yes, ahead of time. And we also have holidays coming up. So maybe if you guys are watching these on maybe social media, mm-hmm. I think we're going to do some special little clips from some of these. Yeah, we've actually uh, decided we had a few people reach out and recommend that we provide, along with the full podcast, also a shorter version, um, which may benefit you guys. Maybe you only want so much of Tom and Jared. That could be it. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Um, maybe we should have a longer version as yes, well. Yes, I think we need <laughs> a longer version. version. Uh, so we'll work on that. Uh, but we will be offering that, and we're uh, here, and actually they should be hitting here uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, so we'll it's going to be huge, go Jared. It's going to be a big deal. It's going to be huge. It's That's a right. bit. Just so you guys know, Jared's kind of a big deal. It's true. So, locally, uh, <laughs> it, it's uh, locally. I'm like kinda, right here in yeah. this room. <laughs> uh, but one day in my mind, uh, yeah, in my mind, I'm going to be. Oh uh, my uh, word! Uh, but yeah, we'll be doing that. We're also talking about uh, making some changes here in the studio. But for the meantime, we're going to uh, go today. It's always exciting to think about what could be. It's true. The, right. Yes, yes. Hope. But hope. today we're going to talk about what could be in a negative sense, and we, you need to be careful and make sure that you're protected, right? Mm-hmm. Tom is the professional. Uh, he segued right into uh, the, the topic, <laughs> which is just something that I can learn. So I, I learned something today myself. But yes, we're segueing into today's podcast, which is on property insurance for turnkey rentals. Okay. And so, Jared, I think I think the first thing to know about property insurance is that you should have it. You should have it. It's <laughs> yes. Well, you say that, uh, and so I mean, we've had some investors who have done some stuff with us before, and uh, and it was something we talk about. You know, it, it's kind of, like you said, it's kind of like, hey, you have insurance on your own home, you you got to do it. And uh, we've had some guys who bought houses from us cash, so like a wholesale deal. Mm-hmm. And then maybe we did some repairs for them or something, and even or maybe we even did a Burr method type deal. But come to find out later down the road, they never got insurance on the home. Although and it's in our process, we tell them it's true. Yep, it, it's in there. Mm-hmm. Every single person says it says don't forget to get insurance. That's right. And that is one thing that if you're buying from a turnkey provider, it doesn't matter if it's us or anybody. Mm-hmm. That is one thing that is your responsibility. Absolutely. So like you do have a responsibility. Um, you know, to make sure you wire the money, to sign your mm-hmm. contract, to make sure if you're doing a lender, you do everything you need to do with a lender. Um, if you're going to get a home inspection, which we do recommend, um, to like go over that and kind of like, you know, do, that is that, that, that kind of stuff is on you. Mm-hmm. But one of those other things, and it, or if you're buying an IRA, you have to deal with the IRA mm-hmm. custodian. Mm-hmm. We do kind of, you know, we, we do help with that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of those things that is the owner's responsibility is property insurance. Right. That's something that we cannot do for you. And secondly, uh, we do want to provide a disclaimer before we get into anything. The one thing we can say positively is that you should do you it. You should do it. I, I think, <laughs> and we're not I going don't all think in. that that's going to get into some like, you know, attorney sure. thing. I mean, I guess technically it is giving legal advice. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I just, so, so disclaimer, is everything we're going to talk today, everything we're going to talk about today is just our opinion. Sure. Right. It's, it's, it's how definitely and, and consult with your, I would also, I mean, I'm going to keep pushing people back to their insurance agent, but mm-hmm. also consult your attorney as well. So mm-hmm. when it comes to things like this, uh, it really has a lot to do with your own personal risk tolerance and mm-hmm. what you want. There is really no, there's no right or wrong answer. Mm-hmm. You just have to understand that with insurance, there's less risk. There's still not no risk. There's still sure. there's less risk. And without insurance, there's a lot more risk. Sure. sure. <laughs> so this is gonna, it's kind of the, the uh, dumbed down version of what you know maybe an insurance agent might tell you. 
Um, and and I, I really don't want to get too far into the weeds today mm-hmm. with this because mm-hmm. I don't want, you know, some insurance agent telling me, oh, you gave bad advice or I, all I'm going to say today or talk about is 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 kind of like what what are the parameters mm-hmm. that I know of mm-hmm. from 25 plus years of investing and owning um, real estate myself personally and um, and seeing from other people's pitfalls. We've never had, honestly, I'll be honest with you, we've owned, I've owned over 1500 properties in different, and I've never had a major loss. So mm-hmm. we've had minor losses. Mm-hmm. We've had, um, you know, floods. We've had trees fall on houses. Mm-hmm. We've had things like that happen. We've had some, I mean, I don't even think we've honestly had major no. Um, you know, vandalism, honestly. Mm-hmm. I think we've had minor vandalism. Mm-hmm. We've had, you know, something stolen. Sure. Um, but never anything like super catastrophe. However, mm-hmm. I do have friends that have had people die, fires, they've had yeah. things like that. Mm-hmm. So just uh, most of what we're going to talk about today, and from my opinion, so disclaimer, 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 is, you know, just from my experience mm-hmm. and just really what um, my opinion is on it. Yeah. So we, we do offer a lot of services. We property management, we offer, uh, you buy properties from us, you get education with Tom and good success, all these different things that the Olson group companies provide. One thing we do not provide is insurance. Not yet. We may at some point. There you go. I actually have a friend of mine, Mm -hmm. um, really good friend of mine, actually, who, who does actually do his own insurance on all of his properties. So it might be something that we could do in the future, honestly. Um, and it, (laughs) From what I hear, it's actually pretty lucrative. I don't know why, but the banks and the insurance companies own all the big buildings around. Have you noticed that? I, now I did. But now <laughs> it's, it's, I put it together quickly after you, <laughs> after you said No, if seriously, you go to all the big, go to all the big um, cities in the, in the country, mm-hmm. and it's the strangest thing. The banks and the insurance companies have all the big buildings. Are you saying they're doing well? I think so. Okay. I mean, if, okay. if, that says, if that kind of says anything mm-hmm. about, you know, I don't know. So, oh, look. And I and I'm renting an apartment in uh, in the basement of somebody's house, so I'm just kidding. It's a joke. <laughs> talking the difference there, so just kidding. All right, so we're gonna jump right shiny into this. Shiny object. Little, there you, you go. Get me on a shiny object. Yeah, here. I got him there. That wasn't in the in the don't, script. Don't he wasn't do ready that. for it, and uh, I got him. So so yeah. Again, we're we're just throwing disclaimers out there so you guys know. But we're gonna get into a little bit, and and obviously there are some costs that you have to take into account when you're buying a turnkey property. If you're leveraging, you're gonna have your mortgage payment. Mm-hmm. You're going to have taxes. You're going to have your property management uh, fee if you're having a property manager do it for you. And then lastly, again, we talked about the insurance. Those are four components that you're going to have. And really, every time. And, and you you kind of made the assumption that everybody's going to get insurance, but you kind of True. already said, hey, yep. now if you have a lender, the lender is going to require Absolutely. insurance. Yep. So, and depending on what the lender requires, they're going to have a minimum requirement that mm-hmm. they, that their company, yep decide we won't do this deal with you unless right. you have this minimum type of insurance. Now, is the minimum insurance, you know, what's right for you? That's a good question. I we'll get know. into that actually today. Not not the specifics. Um, we're going to go more into options. Uh, but the questions I'm asking Tom today are going to be based more of like me being a, a new investor asking questions. And the first one would be, Tom, how do I find a good provider? How do I find a good insurance provider? Where do I go? Who do I talk to? What would be a good way for somebody who's looking for an insurance uh, provider today? How would they, where would they go to find them? I feel like I'm playing an attorney on TV today. <laughs> because I object. most of my answers, I think, are going to be an it depends type of an answer. He's played the um, fifth. And, and, and it doesn't matter what attorney you talk to, uh, you know, and they, they even make fun of themselves. So it's not just me making fun of attorneys, but it doesn't matter who you talk to, what attorney you talk to. I swear their favorite answer is it depends, right? It just, it always depends. It's mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, when you get really old and you have to go back to when you were being a baby, mm-hmm. it depends, right? Uh, just kidding. Sorry. Maybe we can cut that from the thing. I'm sure Amelia's going to catch that. Absolutely. But, uh, no, really, it does depend. So, like, how do I find a good property provider? I can uh, insurance provider. I can, I can tell you what I do. What I do personally is I go and ask other people. Mm-hmm. Who do you use? To mm-hmm. you, who do you use? And now a lot of people ask us who we use, and right. we will pr- always promote who we use. And right. um, you know, it, it's it's nothing that's that big of a deal. We don't have any kind of we don't get any kind of kickbacks or anything. It's just a matter of like this is who we use. Mm-hmm. This is who we have found that has seemed to to be responsive enough for us. Mm-hmm. Um, this their pricing, I think, is good enough for us. And I'm not gonna say that they're probably they're not the cheapest out there, but they're cheaper than most, mm-hmm. is, is what I have found. Um, and we use NREG. We use National Real Estate Insurance Group. We've used them for about ten years. They have an easy 
policy process. Mm -hmm. Um, and for us, you know, to me, that's, that's worth something, you Mm -hmm. know, to be able to just send them properties in a, in a, in a weekly or a monthly email that we're adding or subtracting from the policy and they, they, and they get those on there and they know, and they, they kind of go through a series of questions and ask us what, what we want for each property. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so for us, you know, that that's who we use. We're not, I'm not here to promote them today. It doesn't matter to me if you use them or not. I would say there are some people though, that want that personal touch. They want like this, like hands on somebody in the community and for those people, and honestly, like I, I think there's there's there, there's value in that mm-hmm. for 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 some people, um, and honestly, for some of my houses, I would even prefer that. I'd prefer yeah. that local guy that really understands the market, that also can kind of make sure that I'm not getting into something that I don't want to get into. So, mm-hmm. as far as you know, how do you find a provider? What I would say, the ways not to find your pro- normal provider is normally it's not your typical insurance guy that's carrying your home and auto, like mm-hmm. that's normally mm-hmm. not the guy. Okay. Um, I would say, you know, who I would want to be my insurance carrier for my rental properties is an insurance company and an insurance person, at least that really understands, understands what needs to be insured and how claims are processed and wh- how to make sure that you, you are getting what, what you want from, from a, a rental type of policy, if that makes sense. So you could go to your local RIA or your meetup groups, go on, like we have a few local groups where, you know, they're on their Facebook groups and you can jump on there and ask them questions and, mm-hmm. and you're probably going to get a few options, which is mm-hmm. good. Um, but you'll want to pay attention to who's doing the talking and you may even recognize a few people who have a decent portfolio. And, uh, if they're happy with the service, if they have a decent portfolio, generally speaking, they should have uh, been vetting the different people and have experience. So that's, that's, so that, that's helpful. So, so we find, uh, a property, excuse me, a uh, insurance provider. And so what options do I have? If I call up and, and you, you kind of talked about that earlier that, you know, it's not always this or that. What options are there as far as uh, ways I can insure my property? Now, this is where I don't want to get too far into the details, mm-hmm. but there are, and there's a lot more than this. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to kind of go over the brief overview from 30,000 feet. Really, you have two main options. You have two main options when you're, when you're insuring a rental property. Number one is replacement cost, and number two is like a cash value. They, they call it different things. Um, and inside of those that you have like a basic form, mm-hmm. you have special form, and then you can add addendums or actually add things to that policy that you want specifically. Or you might say you might want to add something, for instance, if it has a basement mm-hmm. and you think, you know, well, this this house has flooded in for me in the past. Mm-hmm. Maybe you want some extra little insurance, not necessarily flood insurance, but mm-hmm. it could be sewer backup. It mm-hmm. could be. Um, you know, it, there's a plethora of different little items and things that you can add to these policies. And that's where I don't want to get into the weeds at all, mm-hmm. because what's right for you right. isn't isn't necessarily what's right for somebody else. And honestly, what's right for me isn't always going to be what's right for you. I'll be honest with you. For me, some of my personal properties, I have some of these extra riders on them. Mm-hmm. For some of my personal properties, I have replacement cost. For some of my personal rental properties, I have cash value cost. Mm-hmm. Some of my personal properties... I am looking at it like, huh, like I'm almost self-insured in this. I'm okay to just keep the absolute minimum. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if I'm only into a condo, for instance, that already has it, that's inside of a, an association and the association's taking care of all the outside stuff of it, mm-hmm. I'm not going to have like this massive big, I'm going to take the absolute bare minimum mm-hmm. policy that I can, ha- I can possibly have on that thing. And I'm going to basically self-insure everything else. Um, I think the other thing to consider when you're getting insurance and options is like, what kind of deductible do you want? And honestly, you know, what I have found as a real estate investor, there's different types, times of your career where the $500 deductible makes a lot of sense. Hmm. There's other times in your career where the thousand dollar deductible makes sense and the $2,500 deductible might make sense. And even if there's some of ours that we probably have a Mm $5,000 deductible on, Mm -hmm. because the way, again, we're looking at it is if, Hey, if, if if a, if a something happens and it's only you know two thousand dollars, what am I going to do? Am mm-hmm. I going to really pick up the phone and call my insurance carrier sure. and go through all the hassle to make sure that that you know they pay me? And uh, mm-hmm. probably not. I'm right. probably just going to get this thing fixed, and I don't have time half the time to wait for insurance to uh, you know to, to approve a claim or not. Mm-hmm. I, I need to move forward and, and and keep these things rented. So, you know. I mean, as far as like what's right for you, it really depends on your risk tolerance and mm-hmm. how much 
how much other capital you have. You know, if you only have one property and you don't have a good amount of money sitting on the sideline, which I really recommend everybody has, mm-hmm. then maybe a smaller deductible is better for you until you can build up some, you know, some some reserves. So, and then really, if you want to get really complicated, um, you can actually self-insure. So you can't actually self-insure unless it's a lending, unless you have a lender on the deal and the lender specifies you have to have a certain type of insurance. Now, even for those, if you have a captive and you actually have an insurance company, but that's a whole nother ball game. And normally most people that are listening to this aren't going to understand that, but you can actually create your own captive self-insurance company, um, which you are kind of paying into. And it's a, it's a little bit of a tax shelter for some people as well. Hmm. Um, but like it, it, you, you can do other things, but for most people listening to this, you're really going to pick basically between replacement cost and cash value cost. And then the cash value cost, you have a little bit more options of how much you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want it to be like only what you paid for the property or do you want it to be what it's worth or what it might be worth? Um, so, and then the, I think the other thing to make sure, and this is where a really good insurance um, agent can really help you, make sure you understand what the reinsurance um, percentages are. So there's also reinsurance, and I know different insurance agents are going to call it differently, but, 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 if it's only like, if it's 80, 20%, which is most of people, like you have to know what the maximum you're really going to get out of those policies are. And you may not actually still get everything covered. Mm-hmm. And you just need to know, like, are you willing to take that risk or not? Um, and, and like I said, I probably don't want to get too far deeper into the weeds with that. But there are some other um, things that you really do want to pay a very close attention to on those on those policies to know. But really... I think the best advice I can give you is find the agent that you trust and ask them all the questions and then ask them two, I think two really important questions. Number one, what am I not asking? Like if you owned a rental property, Mm -hmm. what would you want to make sure that you got covered? And then just bounce back ideas, Mm -hmm. ideas back and back and forth off of him because you may be willing to take a risk that even your insurance carrier isn't, you know, willing to take personally. Um, or vice versa. He may be willing to take a risk that you're not willing to take. So, I mean, I think when it comes to insurance, you just have to understand it really is your protection. Mm-hmm. It really is what's protecting, you know, this this asset and the lender. Um, you know, I think the, the, another thing to point out that, you know, I think is obvious to most people, but most lenders are going to require you that you name them as lost payee and additional insured mm-hmm. on, or, and, and probably also like additional contact as well on that policy. That's normal. That's something that you should do. And if you were a lender, you would want that as well. Cause you would want to be notified if there was some kind of loss. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, can you give us a little bit more of a uh, illustration of what self-insured looks like? I mean, just just a little bit more. Well, I, that I, again, I'm not going to get into what a captive is, but I, what I will get into is like, let's just like, so I bought a property for $100,000, mm-hmm. okay? There are people out there that they might have 200 properties, okay? And they might say to themselves, huh, I'm going to pay... Fifty to hundred thousand dollars a year in insurance. Um, is it better for me to put that fifty to hundred thousand dollars aside every year, mm-hmm. <laughs> and maybe collect interest on it, maybe mm-hmm. do whatever on it, um, and basically have no insurance? Like really, like if you don't have insurance, you're self-insuring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, um, so it's like I mean the other option of self-insurance is like I said you're basically creating your own insurance company with a captive insurance and that I'm not going to get into that because I I I know enough about it but I don't know enough to te- to, to to teach somebody else about it. But really like so think about it like there are there are instances like for instance you um let, 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 I'm trying to think of something that would uh like you own books, right Jared? Mhm. Mm-hmm. Are your books in your own personal house, are they, um, do you have an extra insurance writer from your home policy no. on those? Okay. So Probably although sure. they're contents, <laughs> although they are contents, mm-hmm. and although the insurance company may, you know, come in and, and, and if somebody were to come in and steal it, they may give you something. Mm-hmm. Unless you actually have a writer, you're really self-insuring those books. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
you know, so like, I, I, and that's probably a bad example because there is some coverage because they are considered contents. Mm. But like, I'm just trying to like figure out of, a, of an, like if you had, if you had a car and didn't have insurance on it, you're self-insuring. Mm. Now it's actually illegal in most states, I think, to sure. drive around without insurance. <laughs> but like, you know, like there are risks that you take and there is no law that says you have to have insurance mm. on a property. Mm. You don't. Um, but like, I don't think it's really that smart. Mm. I think the other side of the insurance though, um, that I think most investors need to make sure that they understand is the liability side of it. So there's the property itself sure. and then the liability. If somebody does get hurt, if they're, if you get sued for some reason because mm -hmm. of something that somehow was unsafe or even if it wasn't unsafe, if it got proved in court that it was unsafe, mm -hmm. um, you know, that there, you know, there, there, you do, I, that's why I feel like you do want that, that you want insurance for the liability portion of it, you know, kind of more so even than the property. I think you have to understand that what you really understand as risk and what you're willing to take as risk from the property standpoint, but what the risk that you don't want to take is on the liability side of it. So, and again, I don't want to get too far into the weeds about what you should have and what coverages you should have or not have. Um, I would just say that you do need to have it and you need to understand it. And I, I have watched probably 30 or 40 hours worth of presentations from insurance companies. And some of them literally will, will tell you, hey, these are the 15 reasons why an insurance company won't pay out. So you mm. want to avoid these 15 things. Like, mm. it, I promise you, if you go on to some of these insurance carriers, um, Prosper has some videos, NREG has videos. A lot of these other places have videos on their websites and you can watch them. And I would recommend, if you haven't invested time into knowing this, having this knowledge and understanding um, behind what insurance you should have and why you should have it, you should take the time to invest it. We can't, we don't have enough time on a podcast sure. here. And now I would, I would say Jared, and I think that we already have planned this is we'll probably will have an insurance guy or girl mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. actually be able to ask them a little bit deeper questions about special form and basic form and you know, riders and, you know, you know, what they recommend and what, what the, maybe the pitfalls are of, you know, when, when people don't get their claims. Um, there are some things you need to be careful about insurance. And when you're even making claims, make sure you do it the right way or, or, or else you might get denied. Mm -hmm. um, so there, I, I think, I think the understanding and knowledge is out there, but it's up to us as owners to understand it enough to, to make sure that we understand the risk that we're taking mm -hmm. and how to protect those risks properly. And, and, like we said before, this is where it gets really interesting because we get questions all the time um, about uh, about uh, uh, attorney type questions, uh, uh, questions about um, uh, things like that that you would want to direct them directly to their attorney or to their accountant. And in this situation, uh, you may want to ask different questions for insurance. And we just had one of our in investors that we've worked with for quite some time ask us a question here about insurance. And and this particular guy bought Active Turnkey, mm -hmm. you know, eight years ago. Yeah. And I think he's into some of these properties like 80, 90 grand, and they're worth like 180 now. Mm -hmm. So he might still have cash value policy right. of like 80 grand. Mm -hmm. And that's, to me, it's like my answer back to him is kind of what I'm telling you. Like, yeah. it's up to you. Like, mm -hmm. are you happy by just getting paid back? The maximum you're going to get out of that loan, I mean, out of that, if it's a total loss, is mm -hmm. only that 80 or 90 grand, whatever mm -hmm. you have in cash value policy. That's the mm -hmm. maximum you're going to get. Um, you know, so unless you switch over to a different type of policy or you add cash value to your policy. So, like, I, I mean, to me, and, and I, and I'm, to me, I was like, okay, if it's me, I'm going to be at least somewhere in the middle. I'm probably not going to personally be on this, you know, okay, what the, what the prices were worth 10 years ago. I'm going to be looking at, okay, well, maybe I'm, maybe I don't say for sure I need to get replacement costs. Maybe I for sure don't say I want to go all the way up to today's $180,000, $190,000 value, mm -hmm. but maybe I want to have at least $150,000, $140,000 worth of value on it. But again, that's just my opinion. That's my mm -hmm. gut. Mm -hmm. That's my, um, you know, what, what I would do. So you've actually went into the next one, uh, the next question we're oh, talking about. Oh man, I about. just read your mind, Jared. He, he did. Um, <laughs> it's uh, we're, we're in tune uh, <laughs> to it for sure. And so you had said, you know, if one of the questions you would ask is reaching out to them directly and say, well, you tell me what I should be asking. That's always a great question. I even tell uh, clients who come into, well, you know, what, what am I missing? What haven't I told you so far? You know, what, what, what do you need? Um, and, uh, and so in this case, what other questions should 
a client or an investor who's looking to, to add insurance for their property? What other things should they be looking for, questions they should be asking uh, their insurance provider? I think they really need to understand um, special form, basic form, the, the major differences between cash value and um, replacement cost. And then also, what are the reinsurance amplifications? Because different policies and different carriers mm -hmm. are way different when it mm -hmm. comes to all that. Um, your deductible, I, I, I think we've already gone over really the, the, the big things. And then again, I think you have to know, you have to know your house. So like, mm -hmm. that's why I told you there are some of my houses where me, like I wanna make sure if something goes majorly wrong with this house that I can rebuild it. <laughs> <laughs> but I can guarantee you that's only like 20% of my houses. Sure. So 20% of my houses, I'm probably going with, 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 with replacement costs. And I have to make the determination based on it might be area. It might be value. It might be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if it's in an A-class neighborhood, it might cost me $300,000 to build that house, but it's going to be worth way, way more. And I may only have $100,000 in that house right now. Mm -hmm. So like, is it really worth it for me to spend an extra, you know, two or three or $400 a year? to have that massive amount of difference of, mm -hmm. of, of insurance, like I think it might be. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a house that, you know, I only paid 50 grand for and it's only worth 80 grand today, well, maybe it doesn't matter as much to me. Um, and maybe I'm mo more okay kind of just taking on that, be that bare minimum type of side. I, but I mean, I think the questions that I would ask are the questions that I've already brought up. I, I can't think of anything else that I would ask. I would ask the insurance you know, person, what questions should they be? You know, how easy can I actually get my insurance? How do, what's the process of getting new mm -hmm. insurance? Mm -hmm. um, I, and ask for any other discounts that might be possible. Like there, you're, there might be some other discounts that, that you can get. Um, but I think discounts are important, but they're not as important as making sure that you're, yeah. you're, you're covered. Well, that's been really helpful so far. Hopefully it's added value to you. Uh, and so again, uh, we don't pretend to be attorneys, doctors, uh, uh, accountants uh, or insurance providers. So we always recommend you reach out to those people, get recommendations, um, but then reach out to them directly. And uh, just like anything else, uh, make sure that this person or this company is a fit for you. And so um, just uh, bring in everything back to the turnkeys. We do build rental portfolios for investors. So if you're looking to uh, begin your journey to financial freedom and start building your rental portfolio, we can help you with that. Uh, you can reach me at Jared at Biolson Group and email me there. Or you can visit our website at biolsongroup.com. And we are going to be unveiling our new website here in the next few days. So it should be a lot more user friendly and a little bit more directly into what we do as far as providing turnkey property. So that's pretty exciting for us. Um, so you can, again, email me at Jared at BiolsonGroup.com or visit our website at BiolsonGroup.com. And uh, also, Tom? I think we're going to promote the Active Turnkey book. That's right. Yes. So what do you got to do to get that? I think you have to text something. Yes. Turnkey? So text turnkey mm -hmm. to 415 528 seven four zero three that's four one five five two eight seven four zero three just text the word turnkey to that number mm -hmm. and we will send you a free ebook copy of active turnkey the best way to buy rentals and if you've appreciated this or this has brought value to you definitely share this with your friends like us on facebook uh give us a thumbs up on youtube and share subscribe, us subscribe mm -hmm. share all what, the what else do they say i don't know there's so many different platforms now I, these I, guys are really good i'm kind of i'm kind of i'm like just on the verge of being too old for social and too young to not know. I don't know. Like, it's really weird, um, you know, w the age group that, that I'm in here. Sure. But anyways, whatever it is, subscribe mm -hmm. to us, follow us, share this. Please give our, if you're listening to this in the podcast, please go to iTunes and give us a five-star review and share it with your friends and let mm -hmm. other people know about the amazing Tom and Jared mm -hmm. Active Turnkey Show <laughs> Um, podcast Absolutely. that is just like so amazing <laughs> that you, you uh, it, it listen guys okay change your life. there is there is a there, there is something that we need to talk about here that okay. we, we haven't talked about yet jared and i know jared was about ready to shut down maybe he has to go to the bathroom or something i don't know but i'm, I'm good gonna, i'm gonna make him stick it out here i'm good let's do it uh but you know if you knew something i l let me just say it in a different way here it, let's just say your friends knew something right mm -hmm. Jared, if you're fr if I knew something, Jared, mm -hmm. that it was just like the best thing since sliced, it was just an amazing process or an mm -hmm. amazing program. Okay. 
Okay. And I knew it for, say, 10 or 20 years, but I never told you about it. And mm-hmm. then you found out later mm-hmm. that I knew this 10 mm-hmm. years prior, mm-hmm. and I never told you. How would that make you feel? I'd take you to court. Maybe Man, I, think I can get some that's damages. horrible. No, I wouldn't do that. Punitive damages. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but yeah. see, think about that. I know, mm-hmm. and, and because I have watched, I've been on lots of podcasts, mm-hmm. I've watched podcasts for the last 20 years, I know the value that this podcast is bringing. Mm-hmm. And we've even had some of our clients almost literally tell us, hey, we're, we haven't told anybody about you, but it's really awesome. So, uh, <laughs> it's true. you know, don't be yeah, like that. Tell true. your friends about us. And get the word out. And even if you don't buy, even if people don't buy from us, that's totally fine. We, we really just want to mm-hmm. be uh, a value to the marketplace. And we want to tell people how it really is. Mm-hmm. That's really what the Active Turnkey Podcast is all about. We're not here really just to sell turnkeys, although we do sell turnkeys. Um, and because honestly, like our list is good enough. Mm-hmm. Like we mm-hmm. we really are, we, we don't have a problem selling properties. Right. As soon as we send our pro- pro- properties out to our property list, mm-hmm. you know, they pretty much sell within a a day or two. Um, and if you want to get on that property list, all you have to do is just, you know, email Jared mm-hmm. um, or go on to buyolsongroup.com and give us your email and we will get you on that list and let you know about when our properties come out. And even if it's not something for you today, mm-hmm. you know, it might be something for you in the future. Sure. Um, some people come back to us, you know, in two years, like I'm ready to buy a property now. I'm like, wow, we forgot about you. We, we <laughs> talked two years ago, but we're glad that you're still on our list and that you're um, still staying connected to the Olson Group here. We are flipping Gary and it's been a passion of mine. Um, and we're excited to have anybody else here that really wants to help the community. We've seen amazing things happen here in Gary, Indiana, and we would love to have you come along with us as well. Well, uh, I was going to jump right in there and say we do have a referral program. Oh, yeah. So wow. uh, if, yeah. if you're... There's if a you, lot of golden nuggets in today's Absolutely. Episode. So uh, text referral. No, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't have that text for referral. But if you do know somebody uh, and uh, that could be interested, um, you could reach out to me again at jared at biolsongroup.com. And that's jared, J-A-R-R-O-D. And um, you could uh, you could ask about the referral program, and, and we have several of our own clients now who have been building their portfolios, they've created a relationship with us, and now they're recommending us to their friends and uh, and to people within their communities. And so um, that that's also something we can offer to you. So yeah, a whole lot of nuggets today. Yes, and, uh, this so, is a jam packed. <laughs> that's right, value packed episode. Absolutely, that's all. That's what we're all about, value. So uh, I appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining us. And uh, active turnkey, the best way to buy rentals. See you guys. Olson Group Network makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional advice. Unless specifically stated otherwise, Olson Group Network does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast, and information from this podcast should not be referenced in any way to imply such approval or endorsement. Any third-party materials or content of any third-party site referenced in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions, standards, or policies of Olson Group Network. Olson Group Network assumes no responsibility or liability for the accuracy or completeness of the content contained in third-party materials or on third-party sites referenced in this podcast or the compliance with the applicable laws of such materials and or links referenced herein.